Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written Jaiva Dharma. That is also in some kalpa or other. That is also in some kalpa or other. It was an actual fact here. It may be. It is coming through him. Hmm. So this is the main point here. We first recognize that the eternal plane of truth, the eternal plane of knowledge, um, that these things are coming to us in this world. They may not all come at once. They may not all come within our lifetime. Certainly they may all not come at any particular time or even in any particular kalpa um, uh, or millennium. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, everyone can catch that idea, and especially if we reflect back to a simpler explanation that the Vedas, I believe the word is aparusya. Aparusya. Uh, Apurusheya, and it means eternally existing. So that is what Srila Sri Maharaj is talking about. So, of course, we have four Vedas, we have Puranas, and this is what we have now, but within those are books that are mentioned that we don't have anymore. Uh, remember in our research, uh, when we were uh, having a gentleman's quarrel with the Madhva Sampradaya years ago, they were saying, you quote at least, I think they were saying like 20 books to support that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is, is an avatar of Krishna, but we don't find any of those books existing. Wasn't Remember that, Gary? Yeah. There was something like 20, 24 books quoted by the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, both present and past, means, you know, between now and back to the time of Mahaprabhu, and those books aren't available. Well, well that we did our research, and we found out that Madhvacharya, he quotes... 200, 200 different Shastras to support his statements in his Vedanta commentary and other commentaries on Gita and everything. We came up with a list of 200 books, and you cannot find those books anywhere in the world today. Uh, they might be stuck in some library, but no one can find them. No one's got them. They're not out there. Over 200, 200 books. And it also happens to be on the mystical side of Bhakti Yoga that that book that he quotes from, that doesn't necessarily have to be in his library or his friend's library or some temple library and he borrows it and thumbs through and finds a quote that he wants to use and okay, there was the book. The higher chances are that Madhva is bringing these quotes to support his philosophy. He's bringing them down from this eternal this eternal plane. You follow me? Yes. Because it's highly unlikely that there were 200 books and he had all of them and then they've all just kind of disappeared and, and there's no pages that we can thumb through today. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, scholars and others, they, they scoff at this idea. Oh, they, 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 they dismiss this idea. Uh, scholars are almost... <laughs> No offense to any Vaishnava scholars out there, but most scholars, they're almost condemned to their scholarship uh, because it just becomes so mundane. The, the proof, they have to see the proof. They cannot perceive the substance uh, and, and they, have, they lack faith. Uh, knowledge is required, bhakti jnana is required, but we have seen many times, and we will read a, a statement here, where knowledge... Jnana. Well, first off, we know it's a lower stage of bhakti, called jnana sunya bhakti. Uh, your bhakti, your knowledge, your everything that based on your uh, uh, on jnana knowledge. It's a lower stage. The higher stage being called jnana sunya bhakti, purified, free from the dependence on knowledge. So, knowledge is required. It's, it's a great thing, but we've seen many times historically, both in the present time in the time of Srila Prabhupada, and going back in history to even amongst this uh, people who themselves uh, had the darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Balabacharya, uh, and after him, like, uh, who was the head of the uh, Ativadi, uh, uh, Rupakavi Raj? Jagannath Das, yeah. Jagannath Das, and others became puffed up uh, because of their knowledge and thought that they knew better than their own guru or their param guru or even, um, you know, uh, uh, thought they knew better than the original commentator 
commentators of Bhagavatam, particularly that's the case of Balabacharya, who thought he knew better than Sridhar Swami, the original commentator, and he approached Mahaprabhu and said, oh, please read my commentary. It's uh, so much better than Sridhar Swami's commentary, referring to the original Bhagavatam commentator. So uh, this is a fact. And how does this happen? Are these people born that way? Well, it could be their nature, but more times than not, it's a due to their uh, acquired knowledge or perceived as such knowledge. <clears throat> 